What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Spore Guy YouTube channel. Today, we are talking psilocybin natalensis. Now, natalensis has emerged as one of the most influential non cubensis species in modern mycology, not only for its unique traits, but for its genetic contributions to an entirely new wave of hybrid mushroom strains. While it's often overshadowed by popular cubensis streams in mainstream spore catalogs, Natalensis is definitely gaining notoriety for its valuable role in multi-strain hybridization experiments that have resulted in the birth of unique cultivars like Yellow Umbo, Allnape, and Natal Moon. These hybrids mark a significant shift in the evolution of psilocybe strains, blending species-level genetics to create stable, visually distinct, and aggressively growing phenotypes. Why is psilocybe natalensis a prime hybridization candidate? So it was discovered in South Africa. Psilocybe natalensis is genetically similar to cubensis, but behaves differently in cultivation. It thrives in varied environmental conditions and often demonstrates high resistance to contamination. Its ability to colonize rapidly and its unusually robust structure make it a powerful base for breeding experiments. Notably, yellow umbo was created by crossing natalensis and Jack Frost. Yellow umbo is one of the most recognizable natalensis hybrids. Uh, it was developed through a deliberate cross between natalensis and Jack Frost, a popular cubensis variety known for its heavy spore production and the frost white aesthetic. The umbo in yellow umbo represents the shape of the cap of the mushroom. It's actually kind of looks like a little hat and the center part of the cap is more golden and the further you get out towards the edge of the cap it's a little more white resembling that Jack Frost uh, attribute. How was yellow umbo created? Well the hybrid began by isolating viable natalensis mycelium a multi-spore or tissue culture transfer of Jack Frost was introduced under sterile conditions to the natalensis substrate or an agar plate. Through repeated transfers and sectoring, a fused mycelial colony was stabilized and grown out. The resulting fruits showed dominant traits from both parents, the aggressive growth and resilience of natalensis with visual features and spore output resembling Jack Frost. The golden point and cap appearance led to the name Yellow Umbo, with Umbo referring to the raised bump at the center of the cap. This strain is now considered one of the most stable natalensis hybrids available and is often used as a gateway for further hybridization work. Next, we're going to go to the Allnape. Though less publicized, Allnape is another natalensis hybrid that likely stems from a natalensis and cubensis fusion uh, selected for its consistent fruit structure and dense mycelial growth. The crossing method started from a clone natalensis mycelium. Cultivators introduced genetic material from a high-performing cubensis strain, although not documented in full detail what that cubensis strain might have been. This cross was likely performed using mycelial mating techniques on agar, allowing for pairing and fusion of monokaryotic strains. Selection criteria focused on substrate colonization speed, fruit size, and contaminization resistance, all of which are hallmarks of its natalensis lineage. After isolating stable dikaryotic sectors, cultivators scaled up to grain and substrate to test for repeatable performance. Allnape has since circulated among underground spore and genetic collectors, often recognized for its consistent canopy structure and performance under bag tech and monotub conditions. Next, we have Natal Moon. Natal Moon is a more recent natalensis hybrid with developing documentation, but its formation follows similar crossing logic used in other hybrids. Natalensis was selected as the core genetic anchor, again, due to its resilience and ability to colonize fast with minimal fresh air exchange. The second parent strain has not been publicly identified, but it's likely a cubensis with a pale or lunar-themed morphology. After pairing and isolating the resulting hybrid mycelium on agar, cultivators scaled up selected sectors for performance testing. Traits like pale cap coloration, uniform flush formation, and adaptability to sealed environments became the signature markers of the natal moon hybrid. Because it is a relatively new strain, most natal moon projects remain in circulation through community testing and peer-to-peer -peer sharing. The successful hybridization of natalensis with cubensis strains, despite their species-level differences, relies on advanced mycological techniques. 
number one would be tissue culture compatibility. Natalensis mycelium is cloned from fresh tissue and paired with compatible Kibensis cultures on agar plates. Number two would be sectoring and monokaryon pairing. Agar plates are used to isolate monokaryotic sectors, which are single nucleus strains that can potentially form dikaryotic hybrids when placed together. Number three would be repeating the transfers. Several generations of transfers are necessary to stabilize traits and eliminate undesirable mutations. Number four would be isolation and domestication. After colonization, only the most consistent fruiting bodies are selected for further cloning or liquid culture expansion, creating a refined generation of hybrids. The crossing of natalensis with elite cubensis strains has opened a new chapter of mushroom genetics, giving rise to hybrids like yellow umbo, all nape, and natal moon that combine the durability, yield potential, and the visual uniqueness you're used to. These strains represent the future of functional mushroom breeding, strains optimized for any type of setup you got going, and adaptable across climates and other growing methods. As genetics continue to be refined and documented, these hybrids serve as a foundation for future innovations in both amateur and professional mycology. With natalensis at the center of these creations, it's clear this once-overlooked species is now one of the most valuable in modern mycology.